the Honourable Member for Rosevears for his five minutes. Thanks, Madam President. Yes, and I'll try not to disturb the Member for Nelson, who's busy writing his very, <laughs> as, we, as we speak. <laughs> Madam President, <laughs> somewhere in our legislative pipeline is the uh, Youth Justice Miscellaneous Amendments Bill. And uh, this is a timely <coughs> attempt to address one of Tasmania's worst social problems, and that's the disengagement of young people, particularly young males, from our society and uh, consequentially increased likelihood of them offending and of repeat offending. Put simply, the proposed youth justice legislation gives more weight to the rehabilitation of a young offender with community-based orders likely to become more common as a result and fewer young offenders likely to end up in the Ashley Youth Detention Centre. Sorry? It's not all youth. Oh no, that's right. No, I'm focusing on youth this morning though. That's yes, my focus with youth, this speech. Okay. And my time is running out. Community service orders will be able to be carried out at any organisation rather than just those that are non profit providing potential skills for employment. Judges will be given more discretion in sentencing and the youth will be required to consider what impact a sentence will have on a young person's chance of finding and keeping employment. It seems to me, Madam President, that this proposed legislation goes a long way to addressing the serious problem of young people breaking the law, and I look forward to studying it in more detail. But, uh, Madam President, this problem of disengagement, a lack of skills, joblessness and offending, starts much earlier, particularly with boys, in the school system, and it is there that it must be addressed. Schools need to be aware of alienation at its very beginning, and there needs to be continuous follow-up but obviously, Madam President, some young people are bound to offend either when still in secondary school and afterwards, and everything must be done to divert them from eventually ending up in Risdon Prison. The proposed new youth justice legislation will help, and it will work with and include a system known as restorative practices, which is already in place, Madam President. Tasmania is a leader in the use of restorative practices in youth justice and schools. Restorative practices are used in a range of contexts around the world, with teachers, police and social workers trained to apply the concept. An advocate of the initiative, Ivan Webb, a former principal of the Riverside Primary School in my electorate, says restorative practices need to be supported and extended. He says we should seriously consider Tasmania becoming the first restorative state in Australia. So, how do restorative practices work? As Ivan Webb explains it, traditional responses for an offender include enforced punishment and exclusion, or the behaviour is excused on the basis of an offender's previous history. But alternative restorative practices, which apply strong social discipline, are possible. The offender is challenged to do the right thing, but is also provided with ongoing support. Resolving situations involve the offender, victims, and those who care about them, family and friends. Offenders are held responsible for their actions. They're required to respond to repair the harm done, if possible, and to learn from what has happened. However, punishment and exclusion may still apply, Madam President. As Mr Webb explains it, many people in our community who do harmful things are already isolated, alienated or damaged by abuse or neglect. Traditional punishment and exclusion simply adds to the likelihood of them doing further harm. This alienation, Madam President, was reportedly one of the factors behind the deaths of three young people in a tragic car crash last week. All three teenagers had been in state care. Their deaths led to calls for more campaigns to warn young people about the dangers of drink driving, speeding and high-risk behaviour. But Major Brendan Nottle of the Salvation Army in Melbourne says such campaigns would fall on deaf ears among a group of young children who feel disconnected from the community. Major Nottle's thoughts fit well with the sentiment behind the new Youth Justice Initiative and restorative practices. I believe we're finally about to make progress in tackling one of our biggest social problems. 